Welcome to Monday Movie Talk. As always, we're kicking off the week with a weekend box office recap. And then there are a whole bunch of first reactions out there. The Mandalorian, for one. And then on top of that, a whole bunch of people saw Terminator Dark Fate. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. You might have noticed there was a lot of news out there, and we get to run through it all on today's show with John Roca and RB3. I cannot wait to introduce them, so let's get to that call sheet, which, of course, on a Monday, it starts out with the weekend box office. Maleficent Mistress of Evil wound up falling short of expectations, but it still made enough to take the top spot at the box office. It made about $36 million. Then we've got Joker, which continues to hold super strong, adding another 29 points. $2 million to its haul. And then right behind that, we had Zombieland 2 Double Tap, which opened bigger than the first Zombieland movie and made $26.7 million. Now on to those first reactions. The first one we have here is for The Mandalorian. It doesn't debut until November 12th, but a whole bunch of people got to see 27 minutes of the series. And we're going to run through a whole bunch of those reactions later in today's show. But the gist of it, they're good. Next up here are those Terminator Dark Fate reactions. In this case, a bunch of people got to see the full feature, and we're going to go through those reactions later in today's show, too. But again, we've got a positive response here. I can't wait to discuss that one more. Fourth on our call sheet is a Ghostbusters 2020 update because the movie has officially wrapped production. And to celebrate that, director and co-writer Jason Reitman shared a cast photo on Instagram that shows off the leads of the movie. You could see them right now. This movie is expected to be more of a direct sequel to the original two, directed by his father, Ivan Reitman, of course. The movie is set to hit theaters on July 10th, 2020. And now wrapping up our call sheet with a trailer, the very first trailer for Bloodshot. Vin Diesel leads this one as Ray Garrison, a soldier recently killed in action and brought back to life as the superhero Bloodshot by the RST Corporation. We're going to share our thoughts on the trailer in just a bit. But right now, we've got an interview for you. It's a cool one. We've got Max Winkler talking a little bit about HBO's Barry. I absolutely love Barry. Just yes, love. me too. Can you watch that show and like see, is that weird for you to watch? No, it's weird for me to watch like Happy Days. It's not weird for me to watch Barry. Yeah, Happy Days I could see like. Watching Barry is, 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 is to me, and I've always felt this way. I felt like my dad, as, as wonderful as his career was, was like this unbelievable, um, underused kind of treasure. And I felt like whoever got to him first would reap the rewards, whether it was Wes Anderson, P.T. Anderson, the Coen brothers, Spike Jones, like whoever had the brilliance to cast him in something weird and off brand and not as sort of like the avuncular Jewish guy, I think would, would be looked at as a genius. And I think Bill Hader was the one who got there. And um, I think it's just like brilliant off casting. And, and I think my dad is so good in it. Um, because of the scripts and because of how well it's directed and and it's not weird for me because i'm kind of just like this is what i was saying you know what i mean for all sure. those years i'm just to say like i think it's one of the best shows on tv me too it's, i love it and season two is unbelievable me too like and bill's such a great director i think i completely agree there's a few episodes in season two that are like jaw dropping yeah and there's some monologues Incredible. in season two that i'm like are you joking? I mean, this is unbelievable. Yeah, they're geniuses. I went to high school and college with Hiro Mirai, so it's amazing to watch him and my dad work together. Yeah, I, I have not, I mean, if you're not watching Barry, I strongly recommend watching. Yeah, he's amazing in it, and, and I love watching it because I, I feel like he's living his full potential as an actor now at 70, whatever he is. I don't know how old he is exactly, but in the 70s. <clears throat> All right, let's get into all this good stuff today. As always, on a Monday, we've got some John Roca on the table. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Uh, Adam Adam tries to trick me all the time which camera I'm looking at. I like, he likes keeping, to mess with me. He's keeping the suspense Either because or... <laughs> we have to introduce yeah. RV3. Hey. Is this, hey, is you, this your you. first movie talk this, ever? This is my first time being on movie talk. This is exciting. I've been watching since like day one. So. <laughs> I'm so this happy you're here today. Yeah. How was your weekend? Everything good? The weekend was great. You had, had a, fun. I had a fun time you in Orlando fun. meeting all the people there, uh, the Smodown and, and, and competing. So it was a blast. Thanks to everyone who came out. And thanks uh, to everyone who had kind words to say to me. So it was uh, just a great time. 
What'd you do? Uh, nothing. You saw a movie. I saw I, a movie. I had a feeling you saw. Yeah, yeah you probably yeah, saw yeah. tons of movies. Yeah. What was yeah. your favorite one? Uh, I love Jojo Rabbit. I saw mm. that this weekend. Yes. That was amazing. I like hearing yeah. that. All right, yeah. let's get into our topics today. Before we even get to our first official panel, though, we spoke a little bit about that Bloodshot trailer in the call sheet, mm. and mm. I gotta know because we've been waiting for this one for a little while now. What did you guys think of that trailer? Oh, Roka. <laughs> I don't know. Bursting I, at the seams. I don't know if I should. I don't know if I should be there. Because I love Why? Bloodshot so much. And uh, I just enjoy that character. It's one of the newer characters I've gotten into over the last few years in comics. Right. Um, and there was a lot of worry that first this was going to be used as a Vin Diesel vehicle. And were they able gonna, were they going to come out with a new and authentic take on this character that would separate it out from looking like something that you know, came out of a 90s comic book vibe and everybody involved in it and they didn't do it. Uh, to me, personally, I get the concept of the trip, but all of it feels like we've seen it before. Uh, Guy Pierce in charge of a corporation, very similar to what uh, to the Wheeland Industries thing in Aliens. Um, the idea of Vin Diesel being unstoppable, he's essentially a superhero now in the Fast and Furious movies. And I just, this felt to me like a 90s comic book movie completely out of place and so it frustrated me because we barely got any real thing with bloodshot and so i just was just frustrated yeah. you feeling the same no nah, I, I mean i kind of dug it i mean I, okay. I, I i love time travel obviously i just co-wrote and co-directed uh a time travel for myself. So, nice plug. You're doing yeah. movie talk right, are you? <laughs> nice plug, bro. Thank you, thank you. Okay, you know. um, but no, I, I actually love time travel. I love the genre. I think this trailer showed a lot. I think it showed too much. No. I think I, yeah. I, I, I kind of almost would have enjoyed the surprise a little bit more if they didn't show what happened. Like to, I thought, you know, if it just would have been the premise of a dude trying to figure out who killed his wife, and that would have been the trailer, I think it just would have been perfect. Yeah. And having that time travel element be a surprise would have been dope. But that's just my opinion. I don't know. I, I still dug it. I like the song. And I like music in, in trailers. Mm. Or even just like song. a slower reveal to the time travel component. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually think I side with you on this mm. one, RV3. Yeah, I yeah. kind of... I kind of liked it. I was a little surprised okay. because I haven't had all that much faith in this. I'm not uh, into the comics mm. or anything. My extent of you know knowledge of Bloodshot is from uh, you know Jason David Frank and oh, yeah. uh, the Ninjak mm. series, and yeah. I quite like the character in that. Obviously, he looks nothing like that yeah. in this trailer, though. I was curious to know if we would ever get the makeup or anything like that, but I guess they're not doing that. Yeah, I I thought it played pretty well, and it's a curious premise. I do agree with some criticism but I have already seen on Twitter, which is they showed too much. Yeah, but that's true too. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I almost can't blame them though, because at this point in time, showing too much marketed the movie well to me. Okay. Mm. In the end, yeah. maybe that's what leads to something like a lower cinema score. But right yeah. now, I'm, I think I might want to go see this. Well, I think not showing him in the full, if he's going to have the full design yeah. is yeah. smart. Yeah. But the nano thing, all of that, stuff, just all of it. But, yeah. I, but I hear your points of view. Like, I, I respect the fact that you because it's you they want in the theater they know yeah. i'm gonna go because i'm a massive fan of bloodshot yeah. but it's people who are not that familiar with it who they want to get into the theater so if it worked for you guys that's a positive and trust me i i really don't think it's gonna be like a good movie per se <laughs> but like the, tr the trailer it was an entertaining two minutes right. and 30 seconds so well it's all it's almost like uh you know like a triple x kind of good movie yeah, so yeah, yeah, like yeah playing yeah, into yeah. the fun of it yeah, yeah. like exactly. that's that seems to be where you know the main appeal is gonna be looks yeah. like upgrade to me upgrade uh, that came out Oh, a couple years. How dare you? Oh, great. It's incredible. Uh, well, you never know. You Upgrade's never know. Fantastic. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt right now. So far, we've yeah. got a two yay for the trailer, one nay. We'll see what happens because mm -hmm. it's only one trailer, yeah. likely of many. All yeah. right. First official topic today, of course, is box office. Uh, a whole lot going on at the box office this weekend. Roka, tell me what stood out to you the most. Well, I think the Maleficent. Yeah, how can you not talk about that? Only 36 million, what, almost a little bit under half of what the mm. original made with 64 in its opening. I don't know what else it was competing at at that time when it dropped to get the 64 million, but this tells you that there wasn't that much interest in a sequel for this movie. And it was, the first movie was uneven. It still made good money, but it was a bit uneven in terms of the reception. So to see it come out with 36 million, that was pretty shocking to me, especially because people were people were predicting this thing would like 50, do 50 to 60 somewhere, a double what uh, what um, uh, Zombieland was going to do. And Zombieland's the one that overperformed at 29 mm -hmm. with uh, Mr. Savio Come. So is this speak to the idea? What does Disney do with this? Is it that they, there's no interest in the Maleficent series anymore? Is it an Angelina Jolie thing? Is it this reinterpretation of these, these villains 
they don't want to go anymore? Or was it just simply that people weren't that interested? Because the cinema scores, A, that's a positive. That means people who went actually enjoyed their time in the theater. But overall, there wasn't, there's not a lot of interest, well, clearly. it could be a sign we see a really good hold this weekend because there isn't all that much coming out there this isn't. weekend. Right. So I think it's going to be in good shape. But still, you know, what, what does it mean when you think about how much money a movie like this costs yeah. to make? I just wonder if situations like this is going to create something that we've spoken about a lot here a scenario where certain movies are relegated to disney plus not that that's necessarily like a bad bad thing right. but they're gonna put riskier movies on disney plus and not put all the money behind it to throw it into a theater mm. i yeah. don't know no i mean i think you know people are still obviously fans of the maleficent series um people are still fans of the disney live action stuff i haven't seen maleficent mm. um the first one or the second one so i don't really know um but obviously like they make a lot of money um i think this movie's going to make a ton overseas and i think that's really where the, the market is going to be I it was kind of a weird time to put it in october though yeah it's a it's a weird october i still don't really know what to make of this october just i feel like i'm completely thrown off because we don't have the horror movie release yeah, coming out this on? weekend yeah. which is i mean yeah. countdown doesn't really count there's a whole there's a big <laughs> run, there's a big running joke out there that it's like does countdown even exist because yeah. so few people have even seen it but mm -hmm. uh i think globally right now uh maleficent has a grand total of 153 million dollars which you know, that's a solid chunk of money, sure, but sure. is yeah. it compared to, you know, the talent in this and what it likely costs to make this movie? Yeah. Uh, the one that really had me happy was Zombieland. Yes. I was just, yeah. you know, I mean, when you talk about inflation and everything, maybe it doesn't really top the first one, but I did predict that it was going to semi exceed expectations or come in on the high uh, end of the range of mm. expectations. And mm. I don't know. I, I hope this does carve out a place for movies yeah. like this. It's it's a series that I think has, and I know it's a crazy thing to say when we had the whole thing with the pilot episode for the, the TV version that didn't really pan oh, yeah. out, but mm -hmm. it does have an episodic feel to me where I think if, I mean, if these four individuals who are all super busy mm -hmm. would keep going with it, I think this could be a really fun staple to have every Halloween. But that that's definitely yeah. a very tall order right now. Well, I mean, it took them, ten, what, 10 years to do this yeah, one? Yeah, I so, know. But, but you talk about the fact that there wasn't any... This is their Halloween movie. This is your Halloween horror movie, it seems like. So people came to enjoy it. And the reviews and critics weren't... Like, they didn't bash the film. They just said, this is more of the same. So yeah. if you enjoyed the first one, you'll enjoy this one. There's nothing new, new, no real new ground being broken here. So go and revisit these characters again. And people came out to do it. So to be fair, good. they added a couple, like, little new touches here and there. Mm. But it, it does feel, it yeah, does feel very thing. similar. And, and it's a very, like, transgenerational thing. Because for me, mm -hmm. I remember I saw the first Zombie Land when I was younger, when I was, like, 13, mm -hmm. um, in theaters. And ended up loving it so much that I got it on Blu-ray. Um, so it's good to see it now in the forefront again and people who are my age or who are a little older than me when I was a kid are now going back into the theaters and embracing it mm -hmm. yet again um, so I hope they keep they keep the series running I mean I hope they don't take another 10 years 10 years is a long time um, <laughs> not another 10 years and please don't switch up that cast <laughs> yeah 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 True. but keep the cast yeah definitely definitely and um, but Honestly, like, it's good to see the R-rated comedies kind of coming mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it kind of disproves what Todd Phillips was saying to some extent Ugh. about the whole R-rated <laughs> woke comedy thing or whatever. But <laughs> too, too many uh, directors talking recently. Too yeah. many yeah. directors yeah. who should just get back behind the camera. It's, for it's a kind while. of a relief that none of that's on the lineup today. Yeah. Let's, let's just yeah. take a little break. Let's yeah, take a little yeah, break yeah, and yeah, celebrate yeah, some yeah, movies yeah, today. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but speaking of celebration, celebrations yeah. to the jo to Joker. Uh, speaking of Todd the, Phillips, yeah. yeah speaking <laughs> of, I mean that that. I, I, I think the Joker is a fantastic movie, and I think it's awesome that uh, we're seeing it on, this, on the verge of being the highest grossing R-rated film of all time. Yeah. Um, they said uh, within the next couple of weeks it's going to surpass Deadpool, and it could end up making like $900 million worldwide. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's, that's amazing for, for a DC property, too. Um, obviously, DC is not on the slump anymore. They're, they're making really great films. Yeah. I'm rooting for this one, man. Yeah, it's scary how close it is to uh, possibly hitting that billion mark. Who knows if it'll get there, but 900 million is certainly in play mm -hmm. with the 700-something that it is at now. This is so, so there's no one, no one who predicts
predicted this really to this level, I don't think. I mean, it's kind of insane how far it's going and how much it keeps chugging along and how little it keeps dipping every week. And it, people still want to go and see this movie over and over again. It's fantastic. Also, you got to give some love to the DC fan base. They come out. If you make something that is that they find incredible and different and new, they will come out and support it in droves. So mm -hmm. this really appeals to them. And I also think it appeals, it opens the door again for more R-rated stuff. I wonder if Disney's looking at this a little bit and like reevaluating the Deadpool situation in their heads and seeing that there is money market mm -hmm. for these R-rated uh, superhero films or comic book movies. With Joker, I think it's also a little bit, the stars aligned pretty perfectly sure. for right. it. Uh, you know, you had the, the huge festival hype, then you mm -hmm. had the controversy that got yeah. people talking even more, and then again, we got to bring back the October landscape. Right. I mean, it pretty much has like a whole lane to itself right now. So yeah. I think it's going to continue to, to go pretty well. And then I think it's going to break even more records than it already has. Yeah. People always ask me why I like talking about box office so much. And, and that's kind of why what you just brought up. It's first of all, it's very exciting to see that a, uh, a movie that you're into mm -hmm. makes a lot of money because, mm -hmm. you know, essentially it's a, a round of applause for something that you think is very good. But also I just like what it says about what could come come down yeah. the pike years from now. It's yes. like, what what is Joker gonna mean? Not necessarily just for Marvel, mm. but what is it gonna mean for DC? To me, one of the coolest things about Joker is that it's more incentive for studios with big franchises to take big swings. Yeah. So yes. if that winds up being, you know, the result of this movie's success, I'm gonna be a very happy person. Yeah. I also think that it makes Matt Reeves and DC look at Bat the Batman and go, oh, we can go a little grittier. We can go a little darker. We can go in, a, in another direction with this that could be even more as close to our rating as we can get and that excites me too with all the recent casting announcements and, for these characters and if and even if they just did the villain movies r rated like i know birds of prey is also r rated oh too. Yeah, yeah like if they just do that lane where the bad guys have the r rated movies and the good guys have pg-13 like shazam and aquaman mm. i'm down for that too oh, yeah. i'm so into yeah, it yeah, yeah. we can't move on from box office without talking about some of the specialty stuff here because we had a whole bunch of them do really really well and yes. they're all expanding so i want to make sure everyone's aware of them we had Parasite make another $1.2 million, and that's in just 33 locations, which is nuts. Mm. The Lighthouse in eight locations made uh, 419000 roughly, and it's expanding, actually. It's expected to play in uh, over 500 theaters next week, and if you want to catch that. And then uh, Jojo Rabbit, of course, debuted in just five locations and brought in $350,000. It's got an A Cinema score. I think that probably echoes how you feel about yeah, it. You yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I walked out of that movie ecstatic. I think yeah. it's a really hard, um, heartwarming movie. And, and, you know, I know they had a little trouble figuring out how to market it because, you know, it's a movie about Nazis, but it's really anti hate. But how do you really portray that in the trailers? But I thought they did a wonderful job. And I'm so happy to see this movie make money because I honestly, this I think might be Taika Waititi's best film. Um, out of his whole filmography, that's how just what I personally you. think. Wow. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I that's just how I felt walking out of it. So, mm -hmm. and it's very relevant and important. So There's a teeny really piece of me that feels the same way as you, but I need yeah. to see it again before I commit to that. But I, I also walked out fairly delighted. And mm -hmm. you know, when you're tackling tougher subject matter like this, mm -hmm. and you can find the good in it, yeah. I think that's a, a really uh, special skill set to have. And Taika Waititi definitely does. Sure. I agree. Can I put a shout out from Downton Abbey? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Downton yeah. Abbey, ladies and gentlemen. Boom! Big, big money. 164 million worldwide now. 164 <laughs> million worldwide is the highest grossing domestic uh, film for Focus Features. Pretty incredible. They're at 88 million domestically now. Who saw this coming? I want to shake your hand if you thought this film was going <laughs> to get this much money. So incredible. What a great decision by them to release this. And it tells you the love for this show is still so potent for a lot of people. I loved watching it in London, and I want to go see it again. Uh, and then with The Crown dropping today, mm -hmm. uh, that season three trailer dropping today, I wonder if, there are, if there's a Crown movie now. 
possibly in the works down the road. I would love never to see that. Say never say never. I'm saying, and please mm-hmm. bring I'm gonna, back the Downton Abbey cast I'm going to take movie. the yeah. same mentality for a Downton Abbey movie mm-hmm. sequel because I kind of want it right now. Yeah. What I want even more, to be honest, though, is The Mandalorian. Like, <laughs> so much FOMO online this weekend. I wanted to see that 27 minutes, and I'm just ecstatic about the reactions. And, you know, we talk mm. about this all the time. Their first reactions, they're limited to social media reactions, so there's only so much you could talk about it you never know what's going to happen down the line but it is always nice to start things off on a more positive note so let's pull up some uh, tweets right now of course we are kicking it off with our own steve weintraub who wrote saw 27 minutes of the mandalorian it's as awesome as you want it to be can't say anything specific but one scene answered a question that i don't think has ever been explained slash shown in any star wars movie love that it opens up the star wars universe in a cool new way. Steve continued, this is the Star Wars thing I've been waiting for. While I love the Skywalker saga, I've wanted to see new characters and places explored in depth, which can only be done over multiple episodes in series format. Cannot wait to see more of The Mandalorian. All right. Now we have Ash Cross and watch mm-hmm. saying, uh, just watched 27 minutes of The Mandalorian footage and legit cried. I can't say much, but this is real and it's happening and it feels so freaking Star Wars. Now we've got a double dose of Drew Taylor right now. Wow, The Mandalorian is completely amazing. Saw nearly a half hour of footage from what I was told were the first three episodes. Whoever you think Nick Nolte is, the answer will surprise you, Drew continued. Also, it looks as expensive as it is. They didn't skimp with this one. Spaceships, creatures, et cetera, all in full effect. Cannot wait for full episodes. All right. What do you guys think? Are you... So I imagine everybody's interested in seeing The Mandalorian well before these tweets drop. Does this make you any more excited? And is there anything in these that surprises you? I mean, th- yeah, th- this to me, I mean, this is really no surprise. I expected great reviews. I mean, you look at the team behind this show, John, John Favreau. Um, you have directors like Taika uh, that are that are taking on episodes. Um, also, Bryce, Dow- Bryce Dallas Howard is directing mm-hmm. an episode, too. And um, I like the direction that the Disney Star Wars movies are going. Um, Solo wasn't the best, but I think overall the the, the Skywalker saga is, gr- is going great so far. And I think the... Um, um, Rogue One is a great mm-hmm. example of what a darker, grittier Star Wars story could look like. And it looks like they're incorporating a lot of that style into mm-hmm. this show. So I'm super excited about it. I think I've kind of been picturing uh, The Mandalorian along the lines of a Rogue One. And I, yeah. I for one, just really loved Rogue One. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. you know, when you think about it, too, I mean, we got to paint a realistic picture here. They picked 27 minutes. Yeah. I imagine yeah. they picked 27 excellent minutes. I'm not yeah. saying I think there um, are a bunch of minutes that aren't that good, right. but they probably put together a really great package for this particular crowd. So these kind of reactions do not surprise me whatsoever. Disney Plus has my money, and I can't wait to see this thing. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, just from that trailer, it's just the thing that I was saying about the the Star Wars stories. You know, I've, I've been upset that they didn't fully commit to what they said they were going to do with them, which to which which is to make make them different than the trilogy films, mm-hmm. to make them darker, to make them grittier, to make, give uh, uh, filmmakers more latitude to create different kinds of Star Wars, different feels in Star Wars. And now The Mandalorian finally feels like it's leaning into that grittier, darker thing that Rogue One teased from that first trailer, not the edits and what we got afterwards, which I still love and still think and is my number one favorite of the newest Star Wars movies. But... I want to see this uglier, dirtier Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I want to see this. So to see the reaction from everyone that I trust and whose opinion I value excites me even more uh, to see this. But Perry, you make a good point. It's 27 minutes (laughs) picked and chosen. So we'll see in the context if it works overall. But the the, uh, Nick Nolte thing, that's the one that sticks out. It made me go, oh, crap. What what, what does this mean? Who is he playing? What is he he doing? You know, Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So I'm excited to see what that character is. Let's just try to paint a picture really quickly here yeah. because Disney Plus is a brand new thing. A live action Star Wars show is a brand new thing. Right. What do you guys think is going to happen on <clears throat> November 12th? What do you think? I, I don't know. Maybe like Twitter is going to look like what the responses are going to be yeah. like, how the discussion is going to go because it's a new show being shown in a, in a somewhat different type of format. So uh, any kind of big prediction, crystal ball predictions? Yeah, I mean, I, I really wasn't even like planning on getting Disney Plus, honestly, like, but this show <laughs> 
I mean, <laughs> it is, I mean, this looks like this looks like the kind of show that I'm looking forward to. Um, I loved when Netflix did the 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 Marvel shows for that for that bit of time. Mm. Daredevil, I thought was super hot. Luke Cage, I thought was super hot. So I think just for this show alone, I'm going to check it out. And I think Twitter's going to explode. Um, it's kind of weird that it's not weird, but it's different that this is being released on a weekly basis. We used to streaming platforms just having the binge, the binge factor to it. So mm -hmm. this is going to kind of stack up, you know, over, over the over the weeks, I feel like. I don't know what time of day this is dropping, but with the the weekly mentality, especially because I think I keep comparing it to Game of Thrones and how like like Twitter, if you're not if you can't watch Game of Thrones in the moment, mm -hmm. like you have to be on Twitter lockdown because everyone's going to spoil stuff. Do you think we're going to be in a situation where the second this thing drops, all of a sudden the entire feed is just discussing this yeah that's what i was just gonna say if you based on who you follow at yeah, least yeah true but right. that's what i was gonna say and if you're watching the show i imagine you follow people who might uh, so i would say that you i i would not go on twitter or social media the day mm. the mandalorian drops if you're not going to watch mandalorian in fact don't even turn on your social media until you watch the mandalorian then you can go back on because there's someone's gonna ruin it someone yeah. on a feed or on a comment thread yeah. or something is going to drop something that they think is not a spoiler or alludes to something and it'll ruin the experience for you if you care about that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think, and don't be surprised if we hear Disney servers break down or go down for an hour or so. I would not be surprised by that for the amount of people that might I think Disney's jump ready for it. it. I yeah, think you Disney's think ready for it. I would it. hope so. Yeah, Cause yeah. it's like not even the Mandalorian. It's also all the other well, content that it's they're a launching. Lot of content, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a lot going on. Yeah. All right, one thing you do want to be on social media for later tonight is is the rise of Skywalker trailer. And yeah. I want to pivot to that really quick because we have a chat question from MK Songbird who writes, with the rise of Skywalker trailer premiering tonight, what is your craziest prediction of what we will see in the trailer to have everyone talking until December? <laughs> what you guys got? Well, you said craziest prediction. So it could, craziest. could totally not be true. Right. Yeah. Uh, Palpatine versus uh, Luke, one more time. Uh, they oh, put yeah. that in the trailer? Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be like, in the yeah. trailer. Mm -hmm. You said crazy. You said, uh, you said crazy. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, but you know yeah. I play these things to win. So yeah. I'm going to pick something yeah, that course. is reasonable. Fair enough. Yeah. Go. What do you um, think? I'm, I, I think they're going to allude to the time travel. I think a lot of people oh. are speculating. Oh, that, that is travel. a crazy prediction. I think they're, okay. they're going to allude to it somehow, some way. Huh. Either just in a subtle way through like some editing or some something like that. I think they're going to allude to that. Okay. I think I'm going to... Now I'm debating. <laughs> I'm going to stick with, with uh, the mentality that I've had. I still don't think Palpatine is going to be part of this trailer unless he's Ooh. VO. I think mm. that I, my mentality right now is the Star Wars celebration at the end gave us the surprise of Palpatine. Mm -hmm. The surprise of the most recent one from D23 was Dark Ray, And I think this one is going to have a surprise affiliated with Kylo. And I think it's going to be him toying with, with the light side a little. Mm. So I think it's yeah. gonna, and then you're gonna have all those little pieces, and we're gonna be left until the movie hits theaters in December to figure out how they connect. No, you, why are you mad? No redemption why are you mad? for Kylo. No. Oh God. Is it I don't he kill want Han any or? redemption for Kylo. <laughs> no, I, and I don't even want him to die. Yeah. I want him to live, but I want. You want him to live and want, suffer with yes, what he's done. Exactly. Mm. To the pain, as a certain dread pirate Roberts or Prince Wesley might say. To the pain. Oh, it's, wow. it's, it almost Princess feels, Bride. it feels too dark. Exactly. It's what Star Wars should be. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, maybe, in the, maybe in the Mandalorian. Maybe yeah, that, that's yeah, for yeah, a, yeah, a yeah, more yeah. adult audience. But, I don't yeah. know. We'll see. We gotta I, wait I think see we'll get more Leia tonight as well. Yeah. I think so. Well, um, oh, I believe, uh, is today Carrie Fisher's birthday? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so so wow. I think that, oh. that could be uh, yeah. that could be the right call. And I, I I kind of hope that is. I, I, I actually kind of hope that I'm wrong, and the trailer is more tied to her presence. Well, in the film. You, you said the dark ray thing was the last thing, right? Yeah. That we got. Which I guess so the, the Kylo go thing could yeah. be yeah. affiliated with however Leia's story plays out. Yeah, in maybe movie, a Leia so. Kylo scene. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna be like all like riled up during football, and then yeah. I'm gonna be in, in tears in if tears. that happens. Yep. All right, we're gonna have to wait and see. And also, I'm gonna urge you to stay tuned to uh, Rula Two later tonight because they are on Rise of Skywalker trailer duty, so you're not gonna want to miss that. And oh hey, we got some promos for you. Maybe there's a Rula Two one in the mix. Check them out.
Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Vashadi on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel for all the sports goodness. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. All right. How about some more first reactions? Right now, we are talking Derm- Terminator, Dark Fate. I almost just Spoonerism. them. Spoonerism, <laughs> Terminator, Dark Fate. Or you could do Terminator, Fark Date. <laughs> Whatever well, you, you prefer. You're coming real close. Whatever you prefer. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not farking, touching that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to oh. make that a thing now. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Now let's check out some first reactions from the movie. What do we got on the lineup? I think we're kicking it off with uh, Steve's reaction on the screen right now. Oh, that was magic. I did. Uh, Terminator (laughs) Dark Fate is easily the best Terminator movie since T2. Had some fantastic action and loved how the film features three female protagonists that all kick ass. So awesome seeing Linda Hamilton back as Sarah Connor. To continue on here with Steve, I've been a fan of Mackenzie Davis since seeing her in Halt and Catch Fire, but she takes it to another level in Terminator Dark Fate where she kicks all kinds of ass. If you like her work in Dark Fate, go back and watch Halt and Catch Fire. Continuing on now, oh hey, it's my tweet. Is Terminator Dark Fate the best since T2? Yep, Linda Hamilton. Lim- Linda Hamilton's return makes a big difference. Mackenzie Davis kicks all the ass and Natalia Reyes is an excellent anchor. Gabriel Luna's Rev9 is a winner too. Physicality, VFX, fights, all spot on. Glad they gave this another go. Now we've got a tweet from Haley. PSA for my queer ladies, you are not prepared for how much Mackenzie Davis is going to F up. Oh, the F word's on the screen. F up your, thanks Haley. F up your life in Terminator (laughs) Dark Fate. I would die for Grace and you would too. You just don't know it yet. All right, and more from Haley. Oh, the film, you ask? It's solid. Mm -hmm. Super well-articulated action. Linda Hamilton is aces. Easily the best sequel since T2. Dark Fate takes the Force Awakens. If it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality to Cameron's films. And turns out, it ain't broke. Finally, we have a tweet from Eric Eric Eisenberg who writes... Excited to report Terminator Dark Fate is the best sequel in the franchise since T2. It's a return to basics movie reminiscent of Star Wars The Force Awakens in that way. But the new heroes are fantastic. It's great to see the legends kicking ass and the action is great. So much ass kicking in these tweets. Yeah, yeah. I think we've said ass more than we've said it, you know, the last three months on this show. Yeah, mm. no, it's, it's an ass kicking <laughs> route. Uh, I'm looking forward to this movie. Honestly, uh, James Cameron is m- one of my favorite filmmakers, I think, of all time. His uh, Avatar, you know, a lot of people mm. shit on it, but I, uh, excuse me. There you go. Uh, well, it's all right. You said Avatar, you throw some shit in there, too. Uh, a lot of people, you know, we're talking about asses here. Come on. Um, a lot of people don't like that. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people don't like Avatar. Uh, it's one of the movies I saw early on that really inspired me to go into filmmaking. And um, I think that uh, this, this, reception that we're getting here you know obviously james cameron has a story by credit he's a producer on this movie it just proves to me look cameron's the king of sequels man uh terminator 2 aliens um this movie is getting good reviews and i think the avatar sequels are going to be great too so Mm. (laughs) look all i can tell you is i was i've i've been cautiously looking forward to this uh this one because this is one of my favorite franchises that constantly doesn't get it right in the last two fully but mm. i mean i will defend rise of the machines i think that's still a good terminator movie a salvation you can argue back and forth certainly genesis not so much but now this feels like this is such a thing that they've discovered which i find shocking it, along the halloween lines this idea of going back eliminating other sequels bringing these actors back and then you know, capturing the vibe again. And that's exciting because that means there's hope for other franchises possibly to try this in the future if they can. 
<clears throat> aliens. And I look at this and I go, this is great. And I love the reactions. Um, and I'm excited about it. Haley saying it's solid makes me a little hesitant. So that makes me go, okay, that doesn't mean great. That means good. So I want to enjoy it as much as you guys enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to seeing it tonight. I'm X. Uh, I'm getting there early so no one can so I get the right seat look, and look enjoy this you. and it's great to see Arnold but you're uh, gonna miss the Rise of Skywalker trailer are you gonna stress about that? no because you know what's gonna be waiting for when I get out of the theater <laughs> and no one's gonna ruin it for me because I won't be on social media that'll be the thing everyone will be talking about Rise of Skywalker and then mm -hmm. like you'll, you'll be holding down the Terminator Dark Fate yeah, uh, I'll be for able to tonight talk about, exactly. all right yeah. let's talk a little bit about box office so we've got these first reactions that seem largely positive mm -hmm. do you think this is a good sign that that this movie is going to potentially hit blockbuster status. Yeah, people love this franchise. People love Arnold. People love Linda Hamilton coming back. Especially, and I think someone said that in one of their reactions that Linda Hamilton was actually the anchor of this franchise. Yes. Although it's been identified as Arnold's franchise, it's really her franchise. Yes. And I loved that take to it. And um, I think that's, people are desperate to come out and enjoy that once and for all. She's the coolest. Yes, she she's is. Cool. I don't even know if we've teased this yet, but I feel like we should because next week we're going to have a brand new episode of Collider, uh, Collider's Ladies Night. Mm. I can't speak today. Collider Ladies Night yeah. with Linda Hamilton. That's all. It, that's it nice. really it, it blew my mind to be nice. sitting in I'm the sure. same room as her. Yeah, yeah that's, that's amazing. I mean, honestly, like, you know, Terminator 2 is obviously one of those cinema, cinema, cin you know, one of those big films. Mm -hmm. You Strat caught my movie. problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just go for spoonerisms, spoonerisms and we'll all feel all better. That's all it is. <laughs> um, but, you know, the T2 and the portrayal of Linda Hamilton in this movie is, is one of the all time great mm -hmm. female action, you know, uh, performances I think of all time. So bringing her back here makes a lot of sense. And it just goes to show you that, you know, a lot of people are comparing this to like the, the Force Awakens in the sense that I guess it, you know, pays a lot of homage to T2 and kind of throws back to a lot of those elements. It's kind of cool seeing uh, Linda being the, the Arnold of this movie, right? Mm -hmm. Being the, the person in T2 where, where Arnold was coming back as the, the Terminator to, 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 to help, she's yeah. coming back and helping in this movie. So I love that. For what it's worth, I think that uh, Force Awakens comparison is a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing, yeah. Um, like let's say, actually first, before I even ask you this question, very quickly, how much money is this making opening weekend? What is it prognot what is it being predicted to do right now? Um, I think last I checked, maybe between thirty and forty or thirty, 30 and 40. or thirty five and forty five. Sixty. Sixty to seventy. Oh wow. Okay. I don't know, man. Well, Terminator Genesis. Ooh. I think a lot of people still mm. feel away about Terminator Genesis, so so sixty to seventy five. I think word of mouth is going to help this a little. So I'm not ready to go well beyond the predicted range, but I think I would say something something like 45, especially mm. because, again, this weekend, not all that much is coming out, right. and people could maybe be saving their money for the very beginning of November. So mm, I'll say yeah. 45 for now. 45, yeah. I'm going on the lower end, 35, 45. All right. Let's say, let's say the movie does well. Do you think we're going to get another one in the near future, or is this going to be it? Here's the deal. I hope so and keep Tim Miller. I think Deadpool suffered too, suffered from not having Tim Miller. So keep Tim Miller if you're going to have him on, uh, if you're going to continue this, because if he got it right, when the last three installments really didn't get it 100% right, you gotta go with this guy. Yeah. That's my thing, that's my okay. interpretation. I wasn't laughing at you, I was no. laughing at the, the live chat because Guess how many bread questions we have today? Oh, Jesus. Dorian. Hi. Dorian. Let's get this Dorian. bread. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. You open no. the door to it. So because this like is your suspect. very first movie talk, I feel like we got to you know, bring you into the fold with bread questions. So this yes. one is specifically for you, RB3. Uh -oh. Rick Samoris is asking, what is your favorite bread and what kind of bread are you? Um, listen, I, I think I'm we bread myself. Uh, you know, that's just how... I'm colored, but then I also I also like uh, I mean listen I'm old school you know I like sourdough you know it's all everybody on this panel likes sourdough but me oh really yeah uh, sourdough maybe good. I haven't had the right sourdough I, I don't, don't want sourdough. if it's toasted the right way it's, okay it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's what a good bread time. were you have we done this I'm stone grown wheat that's yeah, what yeah, I am. yeah stone no you are <laughs> you definitely are baked in fire son yeah <laughs> and I'm an everything bagel but only one made in New York City hey, <laughs> all right hey, hey, one more bread question because I do find this amusing yes. Jonathan Caro is asking us, retitle an action movie with bread in the title or anything related to bread. Rye, <laughs> wheat, croissant, dough, etc. Mm. So the, the reason why he's bringing this up is because we had a good time making his Twitter handle for Halloween oh, using right. bread words. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. So it's like... Uh, okay. Terminator uh, 3, Rise of the Croissants. Maybe. Rise of the Croissants, yeah. Do croissants so rise? Do they rise? Yeah. 
So was that film. Man. <laughs> uh, let me see. Dark. I, we got, I feel like we've got to like reverse engineer this and okay. figure out like a bread with a like with a with a simple right. You know, a, like right. a, a not too many syllables that you can automatically swap in for another word that already exists. Okay. Right. You know, the, uh, I, I, the rye of Skywalker. The rye of Skywalker. I like that. I like that. I was thinking, you know, the Dark Knight, Dark Toast. You know. Or, <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> where can we put the word bagel? I just want a bagel right now. I don't know bagel. Yeah. Where would you put that? Ah, uh, I don't know. Bagel. There's got to be some franchise out there that is bagel fitted. Man, we got to think about this. Okay. Think about this while, while Dorian put it in the in the live chat Slack. If we get any good suggestions, I want to know what are your bread spin on action bread spins on action movies. Somebody said. Somebody said in the live chat. I just saw the last Wonder Hero. That's Oof. good. That's good. That's good. Uh, Wonder okay. Bread. Bagel Boys instead of the Bad Boys, maybe. Uh, bagel, boys? bagel Boys. Bagel Boys. Bagel Boys. Bagel, bagel boys. boys. What you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do when they come for I'm you? I'm all for this. All right. <laughs> all right let's oh get a question from the prince that wasn't promised, who's asking us, what would be your zombie apocalypse movie character dream team to survive the apocalypse? Ooh. Jeez. Movie all characters right. or actors or... Jeez. I would go. I feel like characters are more appropriate because right. just because someone looks badass in a zombie movie doesn't mean in real life that person can yeah, actually defend true. themselves. That's true. All right. From the movies. From the movies. Um, I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm. I'm. I always think of Shaun of the Dead, right? Mm. And oh, yeah, uh, Simon Pegg. Mm. He, he made friends with a zombie. And I think ultimately befriend, befriending zombies is a, is a better way of, 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 of taking them I over, feel like so. that's the tactic most of us don't take. And who knows? It's like mm, when yeah. a zombie apocalypse actually does happen, none of the rules of the majority of zombie movies are going to reply and it's going to be the reverse, something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, you make friends with them, you associate with them, that, that won't hurt you. You have a, a legion of zombies guarding you. That's, oh, okay. That's the way you do it. There you go. I'm trying to figure out who I would pick from the zombie land team because I like all of them, mm. but I feel like Tallahassee could do the best job of keeping me safe. Although I do really appreciate Columbus's rules. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Woody. Yeah. Isn't that Tallahassee? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if there's many people that I would because like most people aren't like zombie apocalypse happen to people, right? And most of the times you don't pick up in a movie when it's already happened and you're trying to function. To, Zombieland's one of those rare ones where that happens, right? Because right? right, like right. Dawn of the Dead or whatever was the first one, it's like, oh, they're here at the mall. Right. And was it the World War Z, same thing, uh, things broken out and they're trying to deal with it as it's happening. Uh, 28 Days Later, same thing, trying to deal right. with it as it's happening. So there's not many that, except for, of course, the TV series Walking Dead, where it's already been happening for a while, and you have characters You get one Walking Dead character, who do you pick? Oh, I take Michonne. No, I, no one can take her. That's fine. I'll take Negan any day. Negan, uh, Negan with the bat. Absolutely. With the bat. He's yeah. a terrible, terrible person, but... He knows I think you just put yourself in a situation where you should be just as afraid of the humans around you as yeah. the yeah. zombies. Well, that's fine because I can't handle Rick Grimes and his constant passive aggressiveness. It drives me insane. <laughs> so but then, aren't you afraid that Negan's gonna like imprison you? Yeah, yeah. but I know he's evil. Like yeah. I know what that is. I know what that is, and that's not changing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. With Rick, it's constantly. Like, what do you feel this season, Rick? <laughs> and it's like, oh, oh, Rick. It's oh, Rick. <laughs> we got a really good bagel <laughs> suggestion. So. Hello. Ian Groen said uh, bagel juice. Bagel juice. Ah, I like that. Uh, I, I dig that. I dig that. Okay. Um, bagel juice, bagel juice. I don't know, bagel Andrew juice. Sprouse. This one might be bagel. a stretch. A bagel hawk down. Oh, <laughs> that's good one. That's good one. That's good one. I don't know that's about that one. Yeah. Um, so let's get a question from Sky Patterson. So with Dark Fate hitting theaters, will we get another Alien Predator Scream, Friday the 13th, Elm Street, or Texas Chainsaw franchise film or a reboot? If you are implying that the retcon approach should be taken to any of these franchises, I wholeheartedly insist that you remove Scream from the list. Wow. Have you rewatched Scream 4 anytime recently? That wow. movie is a good movie. And that, really, a good movie. Okay. Scream 3 will always have a special place in my heart. It is completely different from everything else around it. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in the best way, but I still enjoy it. Okay. Right, right. It's an enjoyable movie for yes, sure. I, 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 I think Scream, Scream still holds a place in people's hearts, I, I feel like. What are the other franchises that were? Um, uh, so Sky name dropped Alien, Predator, not going to say the S word, right. Friday the 13th, Elm Street, or Texas Chainsaw. Texas Chainsaw. 
Yeah. So you that would retcon it. it and bring the. Oh. I would. I would retcon. Alien. That's that's just not even a question. Really? Do you think Ridley Scott would ever let that happen? I wish he would. I wish he effing would, farking would, because I would like to see Sigourney <laughs> Weaver come back. Because Sigourney Weaver is still Points badass. Roca. Yeah, I mean, she's still badass. I want her back in this situation. And I think she has been the missing ingredient yeah. since, uh, for all the uh, sequels afterwards. Because um, a lot of people defend that Alien 3 still, the Fincher one, yeah. even though it was taken out of his hands. There's still a lot of good scenes with her in that movie and Charles Dance as well, young Charles Dance. Yeah. Um, but like the the other ones didn't quite hit the mark. And I think she is the missing piece. She's the reason we loved it so much. Then it Neil, wasn't the aliens. Neil Blomkamp had uh, yes. a pitch for, mm. for yes. a I really wanted to, to see that movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish Chappie would have done well. That really would have. <laughs> Wait, here's a burning question. <laughs> yes. How do you feel about Chappie? Oh. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Oh. When I first saw it, I didn't like it. You but do I, not know time. how happy it makes me to hear someone say that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a really, <laughs> honestly, like, if it would have came out, I think, in today, today it would have gotten way better reception. Yes. Yeah, I love sure. I really, I really love Chappie. I don't want to know what you think, bro. No good. Uh, Devin Lott is asking us, what is, in your opinion, the most underrated horror movie? Oh, I'm actually curious to know what you would think about underrated this. Underrated is tough because it's like, what does underrated mean? Do you mean escape that room. not a lot of people went to es see it? Okay, I will say escape room because okay. I feel like many out there might have said, oh, it's just another January horror movie. It's another like, right. you know, like a con uh, like a concept just to make a quick bu buck. I thought that that played with the escape room idea very well. Mm -hmm. The production value was super high. There are a couple of very good performances in it. And I think um, Adam Robitaille directed the crap out of that movie. I will say this, the one film that has a strong, tiny uh, contingent of people. And when we discover that other people love this movie too, we welcome them with open arms into the fold. And that's Session 9. Like mm -hmm. that film, n hardly anyone talks about it. It is one of the most psychologically uh, damaging films you'll ever watch as a horror film. And it's got great actors. Even David Caruso is good in this movie in what he did, limited role he has. Peter Mullen really carries the film. And it is about this uh, old uh, psychiatric uh, ward that they're going to paint. These guys are just going to paint it because they might want to sell it or fix mm. it up. And they discover all these horrific things that are in there. And you're just like, oh, my God. And it pulls no punches. Uh, and even talking about it now, mm. I'm getting emotional because like, it is such a, a, a horror film that will mess you up from the inside out. What you got? Um, uh, I'm just going to a recent one, uh, mm. 2018's uh, uh, Unsane from Steven Soderbergh. Oh, yeah. I think it's actually... Good call. To yeah. me, a, the Claire Foy one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Claire Foy, yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, gave a lot of crap <laughs> because it was shot on an iPhone. And, you know, mm. it, 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 but it goes back to that psychological horror thing, right? Mm. Imagine if somebody put you in that situation and you wouldn't have any, any control of it. Um, so, for me, and Steven Soderbergh is one of the best directors, I think, um, working today. So, it, it came off really gracefully. The way he shot that movie, I think, really suited the tone and the style and the mm -hmm. story in mm -hmm. that also that yeah. that movie was that's that's a stressful watch like an appropriately yeah, stressful watch yeah and it works i mean listen it's shot on an iphone if you watch it on the iphone it works just as well as it does on the it big really screen does. So, all right nice. i'm gonna leave you guys with one more bread title <laughs> bready player one Oh, Lord. That, see, yeah, that's, that's that. Good. Maybe that's how we got to do it. We got to look for words and titles that mm -hmm. like could Have roll rhyme, with with yeah. with a bread. Yeah, like yeah. red red. What's what's a what's a movie with red in it? Red dragon, bread, bread dragon, bread, bread, bread sparrow, bread, bread sparrow. sparrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, All right, uh, thanks for entertaining us with uh, bread questions on me three. We appreciate you playing along. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here on Movie Talk today. We hope you come visit us again soon. Uh, thank you. I would love to be on again. Yeah, this is an absolute dream. Again, I've been watching it since day one. So. For for now, until you come back, where can everybody find you on the socials? Where can, can we watch any of your films or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, my YouTube. Channel uh, Robert Bell is there is where all my personal short films are. But more more importantly, subscribe to me and Ace's new channel, First Cut. Um, we have we're doing movie reviews. Mm -hmm. We have our podcast there, The Meaning of Podcast. Um, and you can find me on social media at Director RB3. And uh, yeah, just follow our new YouTube channel if all you right. want more movie opinions. Definitely follow all that, Roca. Very briefly, yep. what interview do you want to plug? Because it's a very cool one. Oh, uh, the Parasite interview. Yeah. Uh, I interviewed uh, uh, two of the actors from uh, uh, Parasite. Uh, Park So Dam and, and Song Kang Ho and we sat down for 30 minutes 
uh, with translators to talk about the film and everything like that. And so if you want to go uh, re uh, watch it now, it's on the uh, Collider YouTube channel. Please watch it. It is such a great interview and one I'm very, very proud of. Watch that interview. And just in case you forget, we're going to remind you later in the week because we're going to play a clip from it right here on Movie Talk. We got to say goodbye now. Adam in the booth, Dorian in the live chat. Thank you so much for your help as always. Big thanks to everybody out there for kicking off your Monday morning with us here on Movie Talk. Let's see what's brewing on Collider. Oh my God, they have uh, Kai Stevens on the show from Glow. Mm -hmm. 10 a.m. Pacific, check that out and then come back to Movie Talk tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. PT for a brand new episode.